on yep now this is going to be so i can so they won't hear me for sure we're good like that oh okay because it's set to pick up oh got it okay everyone welcome back to tucson at pockets pool and pub and we have brian log long and todd dilly here in a race to eight is it a race to eight Both players on the one loss side. So this is uh, their second or third match for the day. Playing nine ball. Alternate break format. Oh, it's not alternate break anymore. No, it's, oh, I got that wrong, guys. It's a race eight. On the one loss side. Todd's got this two ball. Probably looking to play safe. Jesse the 587, Tony the 534. 8-6 race. And safe he did get. Left the low percentage shot. Brian's got a nice little safety here behind his three ball. Or maybe behind the 8-9. It looks like he fired at that ball, so just slowly move it into position. A little bit of left-hand English here, if you can see it. Just pocket the ball and come up for the three ball, kind of where the cue ball is now, in that direction. <laughs> or will he spin to the right? Let's take a look at what he does. Looks like he's spinning to the right. Go up on the right side of it. No, he came back over the way I described. Little strong. If he opens it up a little bit more, he could have taken advantage of the second rail and killed the cue ball. <laughs> We're at Pockets Pool and Pub in Tucson, Arizona. Third stop for the Diamond Pool Tour. If you're down here or close to Tucson, come on down. They've got all kinds of raffles going on for inexpensive tickets. There's a JB case. There's a DVD from Jerry Bryseth. There's a brand new set of Pro Aramith balls. There's an Adams Q, and they have got Diamond Pool Tour shirts. A little bit of everything for your raffle dollars. The food at Pockets Pool and Pub is great. I think just about everybody here has had lunch by now. Had their breakfast burrito, which was excellent. Mike's having some nice chicken tenders that are very good. And Brian's taking a look at this three ball. He's kind of hooked behind the six, so he's going to have to kick to the side rail to hit it. And hit it he did right on top of it. Actually, he's not a bad shot. He's left a thin cut to the left side. Corner pocket. And the cue ball comes around for the four. So basically, if he just makes the ball, he'll probably have position if his speed's right. He might leave the cue ball right where it's at now. Table five, Ryan McIntyre and Ryan Pemble. Ryan Pemble's a 5'13. He thin cut it all right. Ryan a he thin cut it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan McIntyre's a 4'13. 
be a six five race. He was up in Vegas and he went to the art of shaving store and took a straight razor to it and <laughs> overcut it. Mike's having lunch, so um, you got me all to yourselves today for this match while he eats lunch. I hope he hurries because I don't want to bore you guys. He's going with a one rail kick. He's going to come pretty close to the six ball here. He's going to spin it quite a bit. Nice, nice shot. What a nice hit. How do you like that shot, folks? What a great kick shot. Looks like he has to do it again, though, from one kick shot to the next. Now, if you guys like DVDs, Rod Rodney Morris has a DVD out there where he'll show you how to kick this ball two rails. Instead of using the window to go between the 9-8 and um, playing a pretty decent safety because I think he's got him hooked. But in Rodney's uh, DVD, he does um, uh, explain how to uh, kick balls, how to measure the kick. Works pretty good. Todd's going to the side rail and over to the five. Four, excuse me. That's the one thing about the tournament uh, TV balls is the color of the four and the five. That's why I like the regular, I, I have the regular set, not the TV set. I like it a lot better for that reason. It's just a regular color. Just pocket this ball. No, he's playing safe. I see. I'd have never thought to play safe there. I'd have been playing the ball because I like those down the rail shots. Well, personally, the difference. He got it. He got a good safety out. I think. I don't think you can see any part of it. I guess he can't see. He's going right at it. Cut it thin, played safe back. He just fanned that ball real thin. Didn't travel it at all. Looks like Brian can see this, so he'll probably hit the left the right side of it and go down to where he's at now. Play safe again. No, he went the other way. Well, he's straight in on the five. Is he over the eight is a question. Doesn't look like he is. From your monitor, it looks like it goes by the six ball to the corner. Well, for those of you out there that are planning to play on the Diamond Pool Tour, the next event will be at Griff's in Las Vegas. What a great idea to go to Vegas and spend the weekend at one of the nicest pool halls in Nevada. And for first weekend of August. First weekend of August, the 4th and 5th, I believe. And all of you playing BCA... Uh, Monday starts the U.S. Open 10 Ball Championships, which will be held at Griff's. U.S. Open 10 Ball coming up Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then the BCA National Championships for pretty close to two weeks. And then the U.S. Open 8 Ball Championships again at Griff's. All the national championships will be played at the Rio Hotel and Suites. Meanwhile, Brian's taking 
Ooh, nice shot on that six ball. He's got a nice angle here on the eight to get to the nine. And he'll probably finish off shooting all three balls in the same pocket. Or he'll probably play the eight, the nine ball in the side pocket. See where he goes. Forward and down. And he's on the 50. Well, he's on the 45, and he's got a shot for the 50. How's that for the side pocket? Just think two more, two inches harder, and that would have been a whole different shot than what he has now. I see him making this ball. He did, and he overcut it. He overcut it. I sure hope he couldn't hear me. Players are about, well, Brian was about eight feet away, maybe nine feet away. So I don't know if they can hear me or not when I'm talking. Long shot on this nine ball. Stops in front of the hole, but it's a thin cut. And from this distance, it's a thin cut. And the cue ball has to come off the ball, so it's going to come off towards that left-hand corner pocket. And as he spins it. Well, I just spent the weekend watching one pocket, and that's probably a shot that would have been played by both players <laughs> and executed perfectly. Scott Vogelsberg was watching the same uh, match because he said it's a one pocket shot. You never thought it was a one pocket shot till uh, this weekend. <laughs> we saw a lot of those. Play it off the corners of the opposite pocket. And it looks like uh, Brian takes the first game, 1-0. In a race to eight. Uh, Mike's having uh, lunch, so he's not here to manipulate the scoreboard. So I'll just keep you informed verbally instead of the scoreboard. Solid break. Cue ball went forward though instead of stopping. So he's got some distance between the one and the cue ball. But it's good distance. He, he can either come off the rail straight across for the two or follow down and come back up for the two. Let's see how he chooses to play this. There you are. Sorry about the bartender's inability to help you on time. I did hear him. The whole world heard me via the internet. We put you on the internet. I want me to repeat it? Can you spit on him? No, I can't do that. Not from <laughs> I can't because I, I can't know, go that far. Sorry. I know that George used to be a distance Distance. <laughs> My record's only nine feet. You're 12. <laughs> Lost the height change. 1-0 Brian. 1-0 Brian. On a fantastic one pocket shot. Oh, yeah. I appreciate them dragging their feet while I was eating. <laughs> it looks like he missed the opening shot on the good break. Johnny Archer at the table collecting lint. <laughs> <laughs> should have gone to a vacuum cleaner for a sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. And that was with a full break cue. Break jump. 
He didn't break it down. He just powered over it. Oh, it was like half a ball, probably. Yeah, that's that's actually the best way to jump him. I think is with a full cue. Look at this nice shot. Yeah, it was. Look how nice he struck that and came right right over for position. That was a good stroke. Now let's see if he can finesse a stroke. Those are both two power strokes. Let's see if he finesses one. Nice, smooth, straight. Just follow up. Nice and easy. Yes, he can. <laughs> and he's perfect on the four. Wow. His hardest shot's going to be going from the seven to the eight. I don't think he has to worry about overrunning this ball. <laughs> if he does have to worry about it, I would stun it and run into the eight. You're not going to mess with that window between the seven and nine? No. What do you mean when? No, I would just run into the eight, push okay. it towards the pocket. Not hard, just barely. You know. But just, I just, oh, he's going high, so he's not running into the eight. He's going to go around it. And this is why I wouldn't mess with that window, because now he's got a sharper angle, right. and he, it's harder to hold for the seven. Much harder. I don't think mm -hmm. you can hold that seven. That's what I'm saying. If he'd have bumped the eight ball, he's perfect. But by not bumping the eight, he came over too far. He could have just barely gone by the eight. But there must be two bridges on the other side because they have a they have a bridge on each side of the table. It's one of the things about pockets out here is everything is set up so well. They now have I think it's one two. Four, five, six, seven, eight. They have nine diamond tables and three Brunswick's. All nine foots. Uh, and all the tables have two bridges, on, one on each side. They have the plastic bridge head, which means they won't scratch your cue. A lot of places still have the steel ones. Um, you know, they've really, really improved this, this room tremendously in the past uh, two months. They added three more, three brand new... Um, diamonds uh, so it's it's quite the room quite the room and luckily diamond pool tour comes down here twice a year only once, once this year, year. that's right <laughs> only once well you didn't have a full schedule this year either well we added uh, you know we added freezers room we added griffs right so we lowered the uh, requirement to, you have okay. to play one of it for the finale okay perfect and, and I think by going to Griff's in Vegas, you did a good thing because you're bringing Las Vegas players. Yeah. And you, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a player today, uh, Jesse Johnson from Las Vegas. He's here in Vegas. from Vegas? Yeah, yeah he's from Vegas. And we've got two guys from the Las Cruces area, or El Paso, I think. You have uh, Joe Guerrero and uh, Ramon Rodriguez. Yeah. Ramon Joe's Rodriguez. Joe's a few of our stops. Yes, he has. Real quite nice a few. Guy. Yep. And he brought, he brought a tag along with him. A road partner, excuse me. Not a tag along. And a jump shot. I like the body movement with that as he leaned forward into it. <laughs> the whole body went with it. <clears throat> Two rails towards the corner. Come back out and leave the eight. It's uh, the only shot I know. Or are you going to draw it over? Yeah, I'm going to draw it because you're going to run into the nine. I think if he comes forward, he is. No, he doesn't. I see. I see your two rails. No, I don't want to do that. I'm just going to draw it. So is he. Well, it takes a corner pocket out of play because you're going to have to maneuver just a little bit to get past the nine. And now look at your look at your angle going towards that rail. Right. This is still a very makeable shot. But keep in mind, it's a makeable shot for a lot of people that play a lot of one pocket because it comes up a lot. For some players, it's a back cut. Some people don't like to back cut balls. Some people do. I think he'll handle this handily. And we're 
we're tied at one. Nice run by Todd. I think Todd has more experience than Brian. Certainly more experience playing tournaments like this. Mm -hmm. But like we said earlier, Brian uh, has work, been working hard on his game. Yeah. We talked about that earlier. Yeah, we did. We're talking about how uh, earlier on one of the other matches in the other, in, on the stream, uh, how Brian's been working hard on his game. He's taking some lessons, or did he take some lessons, or just just, have, yeah. just been working real hard and doing some DVDs? Acquired a table at home. I, I, I saw. I remember seeing that on on Facebook. And he's been working to improve his game. He doesn't like where his Fargo is, and he doesn't like being rated an eight or a nine. Is he a nine now? No, he's an eight. He's an eight. Okay. He wants to move it on up. Nice and break. You, you got to respect that because. Sure. You know, the Arizona rating system, too many players are afraid to get bumped up. They, they look at it as a punishment. Well, in, in a way it is. Go, especially, go, let's give you an example, going from a 9 to a 10. Right. That's a huge, that's a hu it's a big step, number one. But number two, uh, now where do you play? Right. Diamond Pool Tour is all you can play. And with, the, with Fargo being what it is now... You're giving up three games on a wire, in most cases, unless you're playing tough action. Okay, um, ask you your opinion, get you out on a limb here. Oh no, I'm not gonna, uh, uh, no comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. There are, are different ways to handicap a tournament. You can handicap it by entry fee. The lower rated player plays pays a lower entry fee. You can handicap it by race. By games. Right, by and games. Yeah, that okay. sounded wrong. Um, you can do it by both. No, because it, 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 you're double dipping there. What's your opinion? And I, Either way? Yeah. Well, I think both, both ways of handicapping will be short-lived. The, the, the novelty will wear off because you're still going to have the better players winning, mainly because pool's a game of control. And you're high, the, 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 more, the, mo, the more proficient you are at this game, the more you're going to control it. And if someone's controlling the game, you're not coming to the table. It's not like golf. It's not like bowling. It's not like, uh, well, tennis, tennis. It's a lot like tennis more than anything else. But, but in golf, you're playing against the course. Your opponent can't do anything to hurt you. Right. Okay. Uh, in bowling, you're throwing the ball down the lane. Your opponent cannot do anything to hurt you. Right here, if your opponent can control what your activity is, for instance, sitting in the chair, leaving you hooked, leaving you low percentage shots, he's going to control the match. If he controls the match, more than likely he's going to win the, win the match, no matter what he's handicapping you. So both handicaps will be short-lived. If you lower the entry fee for the lower rated players, well, they're going to come out and play because it's cheaper to play. Uh, and they won't see the benefit of playing with these better players that will probably improve their game. You know, in, in, you know, there's several reasons for that I think it will improve their game, but whatever it is, they're going to not see the benefit and uh, kind of lay off and not play as many, many tournaments. Now, if you use the games, well, that's going to wear out too because they're going to be getting the handicap and still not be able to win the tournaments. Although, when the handicap gets big enough, well, now you're driving some of the better players away because uh, it's tipped the other way. But Fargo doesn't tip it the other way. That's the good thing about Fargo is it doesn't tip it the other way. You still have to play a good match against a lower-rated player. You still have to play your speed against the lower-rated player. But if you do, the lower-rated player probably won't win because the odds are 60-40 in your favor anyway. Well, so, that's a long answer to a short question. And something that we have in Arizona, if you handicap the entry fee, then logically the weaker players would play because they're paying a, a lesser fee and they're Correct. getting a chance to play the top players. But mm -hmm. in Arizona, there are so many options for the lower rated players, they won't play the better players. They don't have to. Right. Yeah, we uh, got plenty of competitive, uh, competitive uh, uh, playing tournaments, uh, playing each other, 
there's so much going on that they don't have to do this. And that's <clears throat> that's not sad. That's actually a very good thing, but not for the higher rated players because now they've been they've been rated out of existence almost. It's almost like you're taking the talent out of the game, in my opinion, because the handicaps, you know, higher rated players don't want to give away three and four games on the wire. No. Well, on one hand, they look at it and say, I've put forth the effort for my game to grow. I've played all these years. I'm now a nine or a ten or whatever. So why should a weaker player who hasn't put in the time that I have have the have same the, chances right. to win? <laughs> you know, even 60-40. Why? Why? You know, I I play good. I, there's a reason I play good. I, I don't. I, I I personally don't think that way. I I, I kind of feel like. Um, I don't like the big handicaps. I don't mind the smaller handicaps, but you have a lot of you have a lot of players that that play right to their speed, for instance. And if they're playing at that speed, they're probably going to win their match against the lower-rated players. I don't like it because I don't play to my speed. I have a high Fargo rating, but I make a lot of unforced errors, which will punish me if I don't play to my speed, and it does when I play the lower rated players because I lose games I'm not supposed to lose because I make the unforced error on the seven or the eight ball or on an easy shot early that cost me a game and they're able to win games and you know but when a guy's solid in his rating he doesn't have that problem and I, I seem to have that problem but, but it, it's not about me but anyway this is why I don't look at it that way I look at it as I just want to play so I'm going to come out and play okay. you know? And I, 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 I kind of, unfortunately, I kind of consider myself, myself dead money. In other words, I don't think I'm going to win, but I know that I have the capabilities of probably winning if I play to my abilities, which I haven't done for, I'd say, five or six years now. But I also think you look at the game differently than it's a, a lot hobby. of the top players. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a hobby. I'm not making a living out of it. Exactly. I'm not hungry. Uh, there's been several reasons for my lackluster play, um, and and so yeah, I do look at it a lot different than, than than all the other players do. I mean, let's face it: nobody in Arizona is making their living playing pool. No, not even Scott. Scott's a, got running a pool. Mm-hmm. There goes the nine ball on the break, which will spot. No, it counts on the break. No, it spots. It spots. Okay. Yeah. But there went the two ball too. So either way, he gets another shot. He's got that 1-6 lined up. Score is now 2-1, to one, Brian. Nice break. Made one ball on the break. Made two balls on the break, but one spotted back up. He made a great shot on that eight ball the last rack. So I missed it. I, I think it was the seven. It was. Cut it in and go length of the table twice. Real nice speed. Up and back. Yeah. Didn't allow the inside to, to punish him. Now, did the eight come into play, or does he have a shot? I think he can see the edge of it. <coughs> I don't think he can see enough to cut it. Play it safe behind the eight. Okay. Very nice. One rail kick right to the side pocket. That's the one thing about playing safe is when you leave the ball in front of a pocket, it makes it makeable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not nearly as safe. Yeah, but even if he makes it, he'll have to bank the three. If he makes it with good speed and kind of stays there, you'll still have, well, it's not a hard bank. Yeah, it's a little past the side pocket, though. Mm-hmm. So if he kicks it and makes it... The speed is going to go down. Yeah, I think he's going to run past the nine. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see how well he measured this. Oh, never mind. He's going he's gonna to jump it. <laughs> All that to decide to all jump that to, All that for a jump. Now, what does the right-hand side rail have to do with jumping a ball? <laughs> right. <laughs> Not only that, he's going to put the jump cue together just for that. Now, just in Facebook, just uh, yesterday or the day before, I saw for the first time that Efren Reyes seems to be retiring and won't be playing as much. Won't Unless, be playing as much. That's, right. that's kind of what he said. 
Uh, and part of the reason was exactly what he's holding in his hand. And I think one of the reasons he said was the game has changed due to jump cues. Well, his his longtime rival Earl Strickland thinks the same thing. Well, he's always thought that. Oh, he's he, yeah, he's been very vocal about it. He, he'll just flat ban him, yeah. ban him. But how are you going to ban something that's probably a cue maker's? Uh, you know, some guys that's all they make. Like yeah. one, of, one of your sponsors, right? Henshu, Henshu, yep. Henshu yeah. And I understand that's a very nice jump cue. It just really um, uh, aids in jumping the ball. Absolutely. He sells them out as quick as he can make them. Yeah, I heard there was a waiting, waiting list for him. And since I have it right in front of me on the other side of the room, if you want to get on that waiting list, <laughs> and shoot phone number is 254. Oh, there it is, yeah. 498-1941. Oh, yeah, you can't see it on the screen, but right above this table, right where um, Todd Staddy is the phone number for Hanshu Cues. It's back there. Right behind him. You can't, you can't see it because of yeah. the lighting. Yeah. You see the gentleman in the red shirt? Well, the, the phone number is right behind him. 254-498-1941. Wasn't that a video game? 19, yeah. <laughs> what is he doing here? He's going to try to tie something up. I don't know. Oh, he's going to jump. Over he's going to jump, jump kick. kick. He's going to jump kick. When I've got my opponent jump kicking, I'm pretty proud of myself. If I'm the opponent and I can think of a jump kick, I'm pretty proud of myself. Look at this. Successfully. Yeah. He left him a full path to the one, but not a whole lot to do with it. Wow. That was a good shot. First and foremost, he jumped two rail the cube jumped the ball to a two rail, kicked to the right hand side of the one ball so he would get safe. And kicked it on the right side. Yeah. He kicked to that side of the ball just for that purpose. It's a creative shot. Yes, it was. Why is he kicking this ball? Uh, That's why. Separation. Separation. Very good. I couldn't figure out why. And then uh, once I looked at the monitor, I could see because where the cue ball is going to head. Worked out well, too. Another creative shot. Because he could have gone right at the ball. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't think about that. Exactly. Even That's you. That's my whole point. No, I, I didn't. Obvious. So I'm in the booth. Oops. God, it almost looked like it moved. No, it didn't. That was that shadow that going by. That was the shadow, yeah. <laughs> we talked about that. That's the shadow going by. It looks like it moves, but it doesn't. Um. He's going to go straight over against the rail. Will you lay the cue ball on the rail? Yes, nope. he can. Nope. Uh, it's going to bounce. Okay. Doesn't have to do too much with this. Just make it. He's still pretty straight. He's going to have a little bit of a problem getting on this five ball. I think he's got enough angle he can roll forward and get the rail. Two Although rails. he doesn't like it. I think you can just roll forward off the long rail. Play it in the side? Yeah. No, I was wrong. Yeah, he didn't have as much angle as no, I thought he, he did. No, he was pretty straight. That's why I did yeah. Now he settled for this shot to the side. He's going to just shoot himself out of... Well, he shot himself right back into shape. Perfect. Wow, that was nice speed. Perfect. He's this dead straight nice in run. here. Is he going to come all the way back past the cue ball now for the nine in the side? Which means he's going to risk scratching that side pocket. 
or will he just come back enough to be straight into the corner pocket? I think he's going to come back for the corner pocket. But it, looking at this monitor, it looks like he's dead straight into the spot in this pocket. Let's see which he does. He's following it. Then he's not dead straight in. No, he wasn't. He hit that. You know, nice. that's that's actually he could have been dead straight in. Some of these low deflection cues, when you hit the ball like he just hit that one, it kind of bends it off to the side. Did you know that? No. It does. It automatically does. Gus pointed that out for me because I've never played with low deflection cues, and I had a shot. I was playing him one match. And I had a shot where I was straight in, and I did something. I think I went rail first. And after the match was over, he says, George, remember that shot? And I said, yeah. Because uh, we talked about playing with a low deflection cue, and I've known Gus for a long, long time. And so he shared a piece of knowledge with me that I had no idea. But he says, you can shoot that shot with these cues, and it'll bend just right, and it'll, it'll, it'll take an angle off that ball. I said, really? So I tried it, and sure as heck, it just jumped right over to the side, and I could have gone two rails with the cue ball instead of uh, going rail first. Well, and I remember, I can't remember where I saw it, but they had set up a shot like that, and they said, you know, hit it hard and follow it into the pocket. And they said, you can't do it. Because the ball bends. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly, what I'm, that's exactly what he told me. Was that, that, that you know, that, that it automatically moves the ball to the side. That may be exactly what just happened. Although maybe he had a little bit of an angle too, but I, you know, I, I don't know. That is one of the nuances about playing with a low deflection cue. Have you tried the Revo yet? I haven't tried any of them except the Tiger. Okay. I've tried the Predator. In fact, I, I took about three or four months, many, many, when they first came out, to try to get used to a, a Predator. I played for six months and it cost me a lot of money Yeah. because I played horrible with it and I tried to stick with it and I went right back. What I had the best luck with was the um, bird's eye maple shafts that Dale Teague had. I had the best luck with that. Um, he was making shafts for a while that everybody was in love with. Yeah, and I, I, still, I still have one on the queue at my house, on, on the butt of my house that I'll hit every once in a while, and I still I still think, you know, why don't I go back to that? Why don't I go back to that? Because I just, you just hit the ball so much better with it. I just hit the ball so much better with it, excuse me. You're gonna draw this under the nine? Oh, uh, yes. Just like that. You know, he, he might, because of the angle he has on the six ball, he might try to play shape for the seven in the side pocket. And try to run, just try to run into the eight ball right here. Just barely bump the eight. Hit it with a lot of inside to hold it. That's why. If he had tried to barely bump, well, he could have got behind the eight if he misses it, so he, he wouldn't have liked it. He probably could have scratched in the corner, too. But this is a little bit of a tough shot. It's missable, and he knows it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't so think he's had a shot prior to this that really looked missable. Yeah, as he's taking his time, too. What makes this shot hard is he's thinking about going two rails for shape instead of just coming over one rail and playing the eight ball in the, in the, same, in the same pocket. That's exactly how he played it too and he didn't get there but he got... He got real good on He got good on the other side, yeah. I wonder if he was trying to go back and forth and he played in, in this pocket over here. I want to ask him, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you could ask Tommy. Oh, well, Tommy's, yeah. Tommy's Tommy. Now, I wouldn't ask Tommy any questions, because I think he does that to release some of his nerves, the talking. Yeah. But Tommy's a fun-loving guy. You know, he loves pool, and but he takes it pretty serious. He likes to win too, so. Oh yeah. He's not happy when he doesn't perform. Nor should he be, and nor should anyone. Right. Yeah, if you're 
if you're not playing to put your best effort out there, then you just need to stay home. Mm -hmm. This could turn into a big rack. Brian could have been up 4-1. Well, you know, in short races, they're all big racks. It's a two-game swing regardless. And now you lose two games in a row, and it's a four-game swing. Todd doesn't care for this. Because he can't reach it. Oh, yeah, he's disgusted with himself. I mean, he didn't want to run it too far. Oh, he's left-handed, okay. jumped up when he hit that ball. I actually thought he missed it because it just barely rubbed off the corner as it went in the pocket. And the body movement. Yeah. You know, when you see movement, it's funny, you can be looking at the ball and still see the rest of it with your peripheral vision. You see, you see him move and when you see body language that says I missed, you assume the worst. If you're Brian, you need to get that last rack out of your head in a hurry. Where did he make his mistake? Um, he missed the eight ball. Oh, and it was a fairly simple eight ball, wasn't it? Yeah. And he made that nice shot on the, that's right, he missed the, he made that nice shot on the, for shape on the seven, on yeah. the six. Yeah. I think he overthought the eight ball, thought mm -hmm. of going up 4-1 mm -hmm. here. Yep. Overthought, underthought, as long as you're thinking when you're shooting, it's trouble. I've come to that conclusion. <laughs> I'm going to take mind erasers before I play from now on. It's called tequila. <laughs> Lots of it. I'm kidding. Man. Three balls on the break. And a nice 6 9 combo if you get to it. Yeah. Two balls going to be a problem. Mm. Does he play safe? I think he has to. Where would you play safe to? I'm going behind the nine. Well, you can put him behind the eight or behind the five. I think it's easier to put him behind the five. Because the five is a little further off the rail. Is that enough separation? See, I like going, hitting the right side of the two ball, going two rails, hit the first diamond by the corner pocket on the long rail, and get behind the nine. He went behind the eight. Very, very small landing area. And he didn't get there. No. And see, but your landing area behind the nine is a lot bigger. Oh, yeah. And there's distance. That's why I like I like those type of safeties better than what you just called out, because had he hit that better, he wouldn't have had the separation he has now, but he would have probably had gotten behind the eight. But this provides both the separation and the hiding, and you have a that that particular shot provided a bigger landing area for the cue ball, so more room for error, I guess. But I've learned when the balls are against the rail, like the eight and the five are, that it's a small landing area. You got to be very precise with that cue ball, and now it's going to affect, you know, how that two ball is going to react. So it's hard to get it safe. I think he, he's going to kick this. Jumping. Oh, okay. He just had his break cue. He'd gone back to the chair <laughs> to get something. I thought he was getting his jump cue. Can you see the side rail at all? I think he can, yeah. He may not be able to... Well, he doesn't look like he can. <coughs> I really think he can. Well, I know shot what he shot he could shoot. Go rail first on the head rail, the side rail, and back again. Yeah. Or display safe behind the line. 
this is what I was hoping for. This is what I was going to be coming to. I need a cough. Well, he played safe, but he left Brian a full window on the two. And I think, I think he's left him a real elementary safety. Brian played a safe and he let his cue ball get away from him a little bit. So it leaked out a little bit, huh? Yeah. So okay. Uh -oh. He's coming back to the table. You know that uh, what we had talked about earlier where you decide what you're going to do and then you just get down and do it? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what Todd did there. You think he was still thinking during the shot? Because there was no follow through on his stroke. It was just this pokey... Like, well, that's that's more lack of confidence than anything else. Yeah. Pool is a funny game in that, and I would imagine a lot of games are like this. I'm just more familiar with pool, so I think of it, but it's all about confidence. If you get down, and I mean, you're not doing anything, there, there is, I won't say there are no, but there are very few shots that somebody like Efren plays that you can't. Oh, right. If, if you see it done, it can be done. If it can be done, you can do it. Right. It's all about confidence. And I've, I've told this story before. I remember when I was really young, which was a long time ago, I watched an ESPN tournament with Jeanette Lee. Jeanette wins the tournament. And they said, well, you know, how does it feel? And she said, well, I knew when I, when I looked at the board that I was the best player here. And I thought... Wow, I mean, that's, that's quite a statement. Cocky. That is quite a statement. Mm -hmm. But then I thought about it later, and it's like, no, well, she has to feel that way. If you don't feel you're the best player in the room, then why play? In a normal tournament, mm -hmm. I mean, sure, in a mm -hmm. handicap tournament, that's different. But at that level, and who knows? At that time, she may have been. Well, see, now you just told all the players that are listening that they shouldn't come out and play in these tournaments. Handicap tournament is different. <laughs> What, no, I, I what, I, what I was going to say is, the best player, in my opinion, the best player doesn't always win the tournament. Sure. And because with pool, there's a lot of other factors that really aren't there in other sports. Uh, for instance, in tennis, you know, it's what you do that forces the other player to do something. It's power. There's so many other things. In pool, there's other factors like table roll, humidity. Uh, Rolls that just that happened to happen. That last you know? match where where Mike hit that ball and it hit some piece of debris on the table. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, little shots like that that you're supposed to make that you don't. You know, those are just little things that that don't factor into a lot of other games. The thinking, all the thinking that is done when you're over the ball that right. there shouldn't be thought that affects the outcome. And I so would say, even on that Karam shot that he just tried, he wasn't 100% committed to, I, this is what I'm going to do. That's exactly what his body language told me when he shot mm -hmm. the ball. He, he very tentative. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was. He was tentative. He didn't. Well, and there's reason to be tentative. What if he hangs it up? Right. But. And he did hang it up, see? So now, what do we go, what do we go to from here to see? He's got an opportunity. He can go off this. He's got a nice roll up behind the seven ball. Yeah. He can even try to make it and get behind the seven ball. It's a two-way shot. But what happens if you make it? You'll, you should have a shot on the seven to this side pocket over here or a carom for the nine. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't have a choice. I think it's the best shot. Just play the ball because the cue the, the cue ball is going to hit the rail. I might rub the seven and leave him leave him behind the seven if his speed's right. Right, real soft, just hard enough to make the ball. What is he looking at? He 
He doesn't like to shoot in the side pocket, apparently. It looks like he goes by the side pocket all day long. What is your ang camera angle up here? Can you go to oh, that? Sure. Yeah, he's got plenty of room to make this ball, so. He's jacking up. Oh, no. Oh, not at 100 miles an hour. No, you shoot that ball real soft. You shoot that ball, he's got a. He can play this. He could also play safe. Yeah. And really. Dead stop it and go three rails with a six ball. After Todd hung the nine ball, he was never supposed to have a chance to win the rack again. Mm hmm. Yeah. I can't believe he shot that ball that way. I would have shot that ball soft at that side pocket all day long. He's going for the make. He's not playing safe. Look well, he ball. Oh, he's going to bounce off. He's okay. Yeah. Yeah, Brian's kicking himself now. I don't think he, he I don't think he knew the shot you were talking about though. Mm. Just the way it laid out is pretty obvious. Fortunately, it's still early in the match. We're still in the bottom <laughs> half. We're going to eight, right? So right. he's halfway there. No, it's three. Three to four. He, Ryan would have be been three, halfway three. there. Yeah. And gave him that. And uh, if you remember, Brian had a chance to go up 4 1. Mm hmm. We're getting back to that 80% um, rule, huh? Three ball outs. 80% yeah. of the time. Be an Maybe not eighty. Study to go back and look at that. I, you know, I don't remember where I saw or where I heard somebody say. It might have been Scott Frost that said it. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I really don't remember what it was. I read or saw, but I saw. I saw the fa the, the figure. Eighty percent of games in pool are not won but lost. And what's funny is I think you'd already gotten up after the last match and walked away to do something. Mike Hammond came over here and sat down and he said, man, he says, I feel like I gave him four or five of those games. <laughs> more net. About that. <laughs> it was more net. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <coughs> yeah. I went overseas in March to commentate a tournament, and mm -hmm. the, the air was so bad. I, I coughed the whole time I was there. Cough drops, everything. I've had this cough, say, just like what you sound like. I've been sounding like that for the last month. Don't say that too loud. I can't afford to be sick. Oh, I, I, I think it's been a, some kind of a bronchial infection. I'm not sure if it's that or if it's a, a reaction to air conditioning, because it only seems to pop up when I'm in air conditioned places. You're dr the drier air picked the right part of the country to live in to not be able to be in air-conditioned rooms. Yeah, I'm going to cough a lot because <laughs> I want to be in air-conditioned rooms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually I've actually been a little worried about it for next week. And that's kind of what I wanted to do here was was kind of um, you know see how it works out. It's working out fine. It's not bad at all. But this is very important. Yeah. A good shot, but I think he ran too far. Well, he's, he, he did go too far. He's on the opposite. This is one of the problems with playing shape to the side pockets. If you don't get on the right side, you're going to have to run your cue ball a long way. Oh, yeah, that good. Mm-hmm. When I first looked at it, I thought maybe you play safe. He just yeah, played no, it great. No. That's what you have to do when you get on the wrong side of the side pockets. That's why I actually don't like playing uh, shape to the side pocket. It's a bigger pocket. It's half inch bigger than the other pockets. In fact, I, 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 I actually measured them. <laughs> I took a tape measure so I could say that. <laughs> I wanted to be sure when I said it, I couldn't have somebody say, no, they're bigger than that. <laughs> Wasn't it Buddy that said never play shape to a side pocket? There's been several of the, of the pros that'll tell you not to really, if you can avoid it, play shape for a corner pocket, not a side, yes. And that's the reason for it, is if you don't get just right on it, 
you're going to have to run your cue ball around the table. If you get on the wrong, sometimes when you get on the wrong side, you can't get shape anymore. Remember early in the, or, or the first, the, the opening match, uh, somebody got almost straight in and tried to three rail his way around? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. That's exactly the reason for it right there. You hit, hit the ball as hard as you could and you couldn't bring the ball three rails. I can't tell if that eight goes in the corner. It goes, it goes in the, it goes the, in the I don't think it goes us. in the other corner. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. So he just has to go back and forth here. Yeah, he's got to leave the cue ball on the same side as the seven ball is now. Outside draw? No, I just straight, straight high. Oh, he went high. He went around. I don't like doing that because it brings the side pocket into play. I'd have stayed below the side pockets. What difference does it make if he's if he's up here or down there, if he's up, if he's this far off the rail, if he's six inches off the rail, he's still got a good shot for the eight. Better shot than he has now. He's going to have to come with something here, yeah. yeah he can't hold it. Cue ball's tracking away from the nine. There's a scratch in the side pocket to worry about? No, there's no scratch no? in the side, no. It looks like it, but there's none. Okay. He'll hit... He'll probably hit where the diamond is. He'll hit right about well, two inches left of the diamond. No. He's got to hit it with enough outside to get short rail. Oh, if he's trying to go around, Long rail, yes. short rail, yes. long rail. I'm just talking about making the ball and scratching. Now, if he wants to influence the path of the ball, then he's going to spin toward the side pocket. Nice shot there. But he still couldn't get around. Yeah. There's no way he could get down to that bottom rail. That's actually pretty good for what he got. Yeah. You can't complain about that shape no. based on what you have. But against the rail, this is a tough shot. Oh, it's missable. Because you can only use the top part of the cue ball. And when you aim the ball with the top part of the cue ball, you're above the center. Think about That's it that you way. You saying. almost hit it fat. You hit it fat most of the time. He hit it perfect. Nice shot. <laughs> he hit it perfect. He said, fat this. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice shot. I thought this would be a good match. It is, 4-3. Yeah. I was eating and Chuck wanted to put it on another table. I said, no. <laughs> but I will leave you after this match because I... Oh, no. <laughs> it's storming bad out there. You oh, shouldn't yeah, go out on well. that. <laughs> it's so bad I wouldn't even look out there if I were <laughs> You haven't live streamed many of these, have you? No, we didn't. Uh, Junior Flores did the first one. Okay. We didn't do the second one because the internet at Skip and Jans was not real strong. Okay. But we're going to stream them this way the rest of the season. Okay. Um, we're not positive. Uh, Tim Kovats and Vegas, Griffs right? was interested in possibly doing the stream there. I need to talk to him over the next couple of weeks. I personally hadn't streamed events in quite some time, and then I went to Portland and did that one, so I thought, okay, well. Well, you've got the equipment, it's, and it's, yeah. you know, you've got it. Chuck helps you with the setup, I guess, or do you do this all on your own? Well, he, he sets up the room, the banners, mm -hmm. gets everything going that way. You know, in the past, um, like the first season, Lenny did the stream. Right. Now, Lenny's, yeah, he's a great streamer. Mm -hmm. Um but he's not available anymore. He's working. No, at, he's at working now. So yeah, and he's and really, you know, all the times prior, Chuck and I were coming in. We were setting up the room. We were taking the entries. We were running the tournament together. It doesn't take two people to do that, right? So let him do what he's doing, and and let him let him run with that. He doesn't need my help, and I tend to micromanage. So. It's better for both of us. Yeah, you're busy doing something else instead of getting on him. Right. <laughs> it's good that you recognize that. Well, and A lot I of people also, don't recognize that. Yeah. I also try to recognize that if you're doing something with somebody, they have one way to do it and you have another. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them are right or wrong. But it's hard not to tell somebody to do it your way. Right. Yeah, I totally agree, totally agree with that. That's part of the reason I would never manage people when I was working. I did not want to manage people because I didn't want to be on their case. And I wasn't going to put up with, you know, people like to slough off. And that's most people, unfortunately. I've 
It's a high percentage of people. Under micromanagers, and they drove me crazy. Yep. Oh. No. And I've been a micromanager and didn't think about the fact that I would drive other people Mm -hmm. crazy. Mm -hmm. But uh, with Jerry retiring and me taking on the work that he was doing, I have to be able to delegate. There's no way I can do it all. And in the past, I would have just said, I'll do it all. Don't worry about it. I can work 10-hour days. Yep, yep, And now you decided there's life after work. (laughs) In delegating, it's allowed me to do a better job on the things that I don't delegate. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not stressing over those, those things. You know, I've handed off things that I would have never contemplated giving to somebody else. And it's it's allowed me to do things a whole lot better. Good. Good. That's important that, you know, um, there's a couple of old sayings that I that always that always come to mind, you know, to thy own self be true and know thyself. Yeah. Just those two. And it makes it so important, especially when you're working with people. If you know yourself, well then you know how you're gonna respond to this, that and the other. And you're also going to know how people are responding to you. A lot of people don't take that into consideration. They don't see it. A lot of micromanagers. They don't. They don't understand that they're they're stifling people. Right. Right. You suffocate them. Yeah. You suffocate them. Now, there's some people you have to micromanage. You know, the, the sluffers. Right. Slackers. Excuse me. Then you kind of have to. But people that are good, let them run. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're a racehorse. Let them run. Give them their head. I think Brian may be on two after this shot. Todd got a huge roll. Missed the two ball with ball in hand, and that's the, that's what he left him. Hmm. And I've been talking to you. I haven't been watching. He tried to he tried to power draw a ball down here on the short rail mm-hmm. and come three rails or four rails, and he got where he wanted to be on the three. But this is a tough ball to kick. If he doesn't hit this ball, he's got a great... Todd will have a great safety behind this 5-6. Yeah. And just two-rail that ball out and draw the cue ball right behind there. And, and Brian's on out. one now. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, he's got to make this hit. It looks like he can hit this. You I'm think not sure he can how get, much... i got to worry about hitting the 9. Uh, i got to make sure he's got enough space to get up to hit... to, to get close to hitting the 9. Yeah. Because he's close to that four, that, that seven ball. It looks like he can. Um, he's got room to go by the nine. I think he does from this angle. Nope. Hit the nine. Let's see what Todd does. I know what Rick Schmitz would do. Oh. Yeah, he just reminded him he was on two. He asked him and he said, he said no. Brian said no. Yeah. remembers it now. Brian didn't know he was on one there. How do you, how, what are you going to do here? You got your man on two, what are you going to do? You got ball in hand. I'm going to put the cue ball right by the four and draw it right back behind the four six. Just like this. Yeah, I like it, yeah. I'd like to have the cue ball back almost touching the six oh, I'm to take lay. away. Exactly. See, I play a lot of one pocket, so I'm not going to draw it straight back. I'm going to use the head rail and come back to the second rail and lay up against both of them. Yeah, I don't even want to leave Brian a one rail shot here. Well, the two ball should come back to buy the eight ball over here. Oh, yeah. If he doesn't overdo it here, it looks like he's winding up. He's there. It's good enough. He's going to jump it. I'd jump that ball all day. And I don't jump balls. That's why I would use the, the, the two rail and come You're into those balls. put him on that yep. ball. I'd put him up against it. That was a big difference in that. In, 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 that's a big difference in, in playing one pocket or playing a good safety. They don't have that avenue. They don't have the luxury of the jump cue. I've got a good friend back in Phoenix. He played uh, one of the U.S. Open events a couple years ago when it was there at the casino. And he was playing against the big boys. You know, mm-hmm. he's a regional player, and he's a good regional player. And he was getting out there, and he was testing the waters to see how it felt to play against players like that. He came back from a match, and he said, I thought I had him. And I said, well, what happened? And he said, I hooked him half ball. And I thought, 
you know, I, I got him good. He says, he just, he jumped over the edge of the ball. He made it. Nice. And he did that. But he also mentioned, he said, when he played me safe, I was right up on a ball. When I played him safe, you know, he was six inches away from it and jumping over a half a ball. Yeah, there's, that's the difference between a good shot and a great shot. One inch. Yeah. Up against the ball or... That was a good shot he made. Yeah. A great shot would have... You, would, you, you wouldn't allow that. He'd a have been great up, shot? He'd be racking right now. Well, exactly. Because he would have been up against both those balls. That looked like a little bit of frustration. I had him where I wanted him and I let him loose. <laughs> well, he's just thinking I didn't get him up against those balls. That's what he should be thinking. Yeah. But it was absolutely a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you can't take it out of Brian's end. He made a good shot for that jump. Sure. Good jump shot. I couldn't have made that ball. I don't no. jump that close. No. Oh. I don't jump that close. I got to be about eight to ten inches away for me to jump. Two rails? He has to go two rails. It'd be the best way to go. He might even go one rail across. I don't like that. I think he... No, I like the two railer. Yeah. I don't like the one rail across, but since he's looking at it, I'm thinking he might do that too. Yeah, I think he's just on the seven close enough that he can't go the, to yeah, the okay. top rail. Okay. He can even go one rail, uh, just using the back of the head rail, but the two rail yeah. is a bigger ball. Yeah. He's trying to go one with spin. Oh, I don't like this at all. It's going to work out for him. It's going to work out very, it's very out well. <laughs> what don't you like about that shot, I'm going to have to ask him about that one later. <laughs> you can't argue with success. No. <laughs> well, what don't you like about that? Wow. Great shot. Turned out great. And Todd is just stewing more and more now. Yeah. Can you see any part of it? No, he can't, can he? Try the other angle. Oh, he's got two rail. He's got a two rail shot. He's got a two rail kick. He's the, that's no easy kick. Yeah, it is. Really? Side rail, head rail. Um, yeah. It's, it's a. What, it's what I would call a high percentage kick. I'd, I wouldn't give him. I'd bet even money that he doesn't get it. Dougie Fresh in the room, folks. <laughs> Dougie Fresh says, shout out to all my friends out there. <laughs> I'm going to leave you for just one second. Okay. You guys are stuck with me all alone. Just me. I don't know how many of you out are out there, but welcome to Tucson. Pockets Pool and Pub. Todd Dilly jumping this ball. He hit it, and he used the, the corners of the corner pocket to uh, kill the speed of the cue ball and stay down there. Well planned. He's looking to play the nine ball. He's looking for a cheap game. possibilities here. That carom shot is probably the best shot. Or try to make the three. Well, he's left some space. Never mind, stay 
stay where you're at. <laughs> Well, we got Mike Howard and calling out games there, and the match is already under progress. Uh, yeah, scores seven seven. And <laughs> no, uh, just joking. Long shot by Todd here for the three ball, coming over for the four. Oh, he was diamondized, and by diamondized, I'm saying four and a half inch pockets. That might have slid in on a bigger table, bigger pocketed table. But not these diamonds, not with that shelf. You want to know the diff difference between a diamond and a Brunswick? That shot right there. That ball was in on a Brunswick, not so much on a diamond. Just come over by the side pocket for the five. Enough angle to do what he has to do. He just wants to get to the middle of the table. Put a little bit of draw on this ball. Just come over to the middle. Take your shot from there for the seven. Did I miss anything? Yeah, you're gonna. No, you're just in time to watch him scratch. Hmm. Still 4-3. Yes, this is the same game okay. where they were trying to three foul each other. Oh. We had something going on over there. I wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> I heard you call the match. And they said and it's it already been called. <laughs> score 7-7 seven, seven is already almost done. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. It was <laughs> We've been playing for a little bit. Remember that whole conversation about micromanaging? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Six to the seven's tough here. He doesn't have the six to the, the top, seven is he? tough. And uh, actually, he's going to want to play this ball in the side pocket. And which means he might. Run. Oh, he's got ball in hand. Never mind. Yeah, but even then. Um, I would just go to the uh, middle, just past the center of the table, and I'd go three rails shape with the, for the cue ball. I don't like that. You don't like going? You don't I don't like, like where he is now. Oh. He's halfway he's okay. jumped up, or he's high, halfway jacked high, up. High left English, he gets around the nine ball, comes down. He's going to draw the ball right into the side pocket. Yeah, I don't like it at all. I would have wanted more angle on that. Uh, he needs to lay that cue flatter. Oops. A lot of left, just like that. Well, he got a lot of left, he just didn't get a lot of follow. I liked the draw shot you originally thought he was going to play without the scratching part at the end. Oh, right. Uh, I didn't like it because he hit, he's going to come over, and he, if he comes back, the eight ball's in play to get hooked, and he's got to come back a long, long way. And to beat the side pocket, drawing the ball that far, he has to hit it too hard. I like what he did, but he's got to lay the back of his cue stick. He's got to elevate it just a hair. He was on that shot. Let's see if he's, he's not elevated here. That looks good right there. But he elevated for that last shot. That's not gonna work. It's, well, maybe. it's not gonna be bad. He's distance and he's close to the rail. Now, the last time I said this shot usually gets hit fat, he hit perfect. Right. You just got to play this. Side pocket shape. He's gonna like it. He's on the right side of it too. He's perfect. Yeah, he's gonna just follow it straight up. He'll okay. be straight in on the nine. It looks like he got went past. Oh, does he there. look like he, maybe? A, this, this oh, this maybe side. you're right. Maybe you're right. It does look like he went past it. Yeah. It's just give yourself the same shot he just had. Just go ahead and get two inches off the rail over there. And that's what he's doing. Perfect. 
He's fine. That's all he needs. Which one? Nice shot here, and gets him to what, five games? Yeah, 5-3. Two game lead. He might not have hit that ball with pure confidence. He hit it with a lot more confidence than we've seen from Todd. Well, those shots right there, they're so easy to miss. They just are. It looks like it's, it's a weird, it's, they're not as easy as they look. Let's put it that way. And he's made every one he shot at. Because there's, I think that's the third or fourth one that had that same type of angle and a little close to the rail. He's hit him very well. Yeah, I like Brian's game. He's, 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 he's done a lot of things right from what I've seen. I really haven't seen him do, do too much wrong that I can no. think of. No. And how many players do we know here in town who they come out, their game elevates to a certain point, and then it just stays right there? And they're stagnant? Yeah. Uh, that happens oh, in, in so, so many cases. Unless they work at it, or they get out and start playing a lot, or they're you know big money players, which usually they don't stagnate. They you know, they are always on the move. Their game's always on the move. Uh, it doesn't happen. Yeah, he's worked hard. Yeah. Brian's got a little old Tommy DiLorenzo in him. You know, he, he can get down on himself, the game, or any number of things. Mm -hmm. And he's talked about it online. Has he? Which is more than you can say for a lot of people. Um, oh, you know, I actually, it, uh, when I was having my burrow early, he uh, he made mention. I, I made mention about you know, losing some nerve here and there, and he he, uh, he said something to me about that that kind of tells me what you just said. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Well, well, a lot of guys, you know, they, they couldn't do that. He's about ready to go six ahead, three games ahead. No, six balls there. Oh, six balls behind the nine. You can I can't. see it on the monitor, but I can't. Yeah, not from here. <laughs> I didn't see the six, and I'm not even sure it's wired. I mean, it's so close. I'm sure it can't miss. Yeah, but six. It's just a question of can he leave the two on the nine? The answer is yes. I think soft. Yeah, you don't have to hit it hard. But where's Whitey going to go? No, right, right oh, there. Just like that. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> I would have hit that real soft. Yeah, but I think he was worried because his cue ball was going to go forward. Not if he hits it real soft. Because you hit that soft enough, the cue ball is pretty much going to stop off the ball. I'm talking about just barely enough to turn that six in. Right. I just get Tony Chohan to shoot this for me. Yeah. He doesn't miss these combos. Larry DeWitt, Cable 10. At least that's what Dennis said. <laughs> How big a win was that for Chohan? That's Chohan the biggest was, was, was going to retire from the game three or four months ago. Of course, John Mora was going to retire from the game, and mm -hmm. Scott was going to retire multiple times. I even retired one time. No. Yeah. I got so disgusted with play, I forget what it was. I just said, I just don't need to play tournaments anymore. I had a bad trip to Vegas a month or so ago. I shot. And ever since then, I have had no desire to hit a ball. <laughs> I don't think you can consider it retired because I never really played to begin with. Well, same here. Like, uh, I think I posted something on uh, on a thread that where Curtis, Curtis Johnson posted that he would pay the entry fee, the tour fee. You know, to any newcomers. And I said, I'm sorry, I probably won't be able to make the tournament because I'll be headed for Vegas on that Sunday. And then a young man from Sierra Vista posted that he had heard I was making a comeback. And I wanted to answer online saying, Come back from where? Where do you, how do you come back from never was? Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I, I found that really funny. And I, actually, I saw him today and I said something to him about it. I said, how do you come back from never was? <laughs> they just figured you were out there playing in the event. 
Yeah. Now on table five, we Tracy Hammond, okay. Rick Schmidt. Rick is 566, Tracy is a 463. That, that looks nice, nice break, good control on the cue ball. Didn't get bumped around, just kind of went over to the side there. Once he gets into this run, straight into this one ball. Six to the seven is the toughest shot, and it won't be that tough when he gets there. Not if he gets straight in on it. And just draws back to the side pocket. That's all he has to do. So many times when I hit that ball, I visualize the short rail that you're going to run into, mm -hmm. and I think the shot through just to that rail. I don't think it through to, I need to go three feet past that rail. Mm. Mm. You know, because as long as you hit the rail, you're coming back, okay, I'm going to have a shot on the two no matter where I am. You can do that on a bar box, but yes. not on a big table. No, because you need to come up to the side pocket. He's on the wrong side. Yeah, you're right. He is. Getting on the four is not going to be easy. Maybe he'll do what Tommy did and play it off the four and send the four ball in front of the corner pocket. Let's see how creative he is. Because that's the shot, I think. Yeah, if he doesn't let his cue ball wander behind the 5 9. <coughs> I think he's measuring it. He's looking, he's looking for the cheap way out. I don't think I care for that. Looking for a shortcut. And how many times do we get up, you know, something like this, 6-3, you think it's my match to win, now all I gotta do is just get it over with. Mm-hmm. It's funny, I, I just, um... I didn't think about that way. I didn't either, but you know, I, I, I have been known to play that shot. I have played a, a shot off that corner, back to that, off that corner of the side pocket, yeah. back to the corner pocket. Mitch playing did side one pocket, of our events. Playing, playing one pocket. Oh, okay. But I, I, I don't usually do it playing nine ball. <laughs> and I didn't like 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. That was just pure, if I don't make it, hopefully something good happens. Well, from what I've, from what I've seen, from what I've heard, when a player uses a lot of speed, it's usually lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. Speed is an indication of confidence <laughs> on some shots. And then there's also the hit and hope, <laughs> poke and hope. There shouldn't be any of that at this level. If you're paying this kind of money to get in a tournament, you're not you're not just hoping the ball goes in. Thank you, you just disillusioned me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually get embarrassed when I slap a ball in. <laughs> Believe it or not. Well, you know, and Todd's going to sit in the chair right now and he's going to say, oh my God, look at that shot. But if you think back two or three racks, there were a couple of times where he missed a ball and had to motion to Brian, hey, I know mm -hmm. I got a huge roll. There. Yep, yep. No, it's, he's just not like in the chair because he's, he's, he's down four games. Right. And his opponent's on the hill. I think uh, the guy who got the bad rolls was the guy who got the last bad roll. Look out for the scratch in the side pocket. Same pocket he's going to make the one ball in. Came up nice, but a little inside English on that to keep from doing that. Ended up pretty good. A lot better than he could have. Well, it ended up pretty good, but didn't do much with it. I think Brian's just sapped Todd's will to win here. Hmm. 
This is a little like that first match we had where it was close, 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 and then one of them ran away. Yes. Yes. Yeah, the five to the seven is a little tricky to get good. Yeah. Because he's got to go from the five to the seven to the eight. Right. And that's the tricky part. And side to side to side. I think the easiest way to get on the seven is going to have him shooting past the side pocket, which nobody wants to do. He's going to he's going to hit this with a little bit of right hand high English and go two rails to this rail over here. I think. And then get there. Hit that kind of tenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now see, if he keeps coming down further, he's tracking towards the side pocket. Not that he's going to scratch, but in order to get good shape, he's going to have to be almost on the rail, which means he doesn't have the angle to go to the eight. Right. So that's what made that hard, was angle, angle, angle. And now he's going to solve the problem here by hitting the eight ball off the rail. And Todd... If he doesn't get out of here well, then right. you know he should be slumping in the chair. Just why bother getting out of it? Yeah, you either but run out here. Or you have to just unscrew. Well, you're gonna because you're, you're gonna lose if you don't get out. I mean, your opponent's on the hill, so I think he gets it. Just a matter of making this ball. Did he? Yes. Looked fun. Dead center. The angle. Dead center. See, that's a huge game right there. Well, first and foremost, if it he loses it, it's over. In the match, yeah. <laughs> it keeps him. But even so, <laughs> it's, no, it's not a four-game deficit. It's only a three-game deficit. <laughs> the break. Yeah, that's a huge game. <laughs> if you miss it, you lose. I'm going to have Thank to you. change your nickname from the voice of the tour to the king of the understatements. Either that or Captain Obvious. <laughs> Scott gave me a good compliment at the Saguaro Cup. He says, you're the voice of pool for Arizona. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was, I, I, I kind of, I thought that was a pat on the back. I, I well deserved. Uh, I guess he was up there listening quite a bit uh, to, the, to the live stream up, up in his office. That was the weekend we were in Portland. Okay. We were uh, standing in a parking lot of a pool room in Portland mm -hmm. watching the Saguaro Cup end. That was actually a fun, a fun, a fun tournament um, to commentate, and um, uh, I tell you that that they kept bringing me some expensive tequila on the house. Uh, Jack Circa, uh, and uh, oh, a long time, probably a year ago, maybe two years ago. Uh, somehow online we got to talking about tequila and I, I recommended this Dos Artes that's not available just about anywhere in Arizona. Couldn't find it. And um, so he found some, tried it, and said he really liked it. He said it's his favorite. <coughs> well, they open up and I, I stopped by before they opened the ice house. Scott gives me a tour. At the end of the tour he says, come here, i got to show you something. He says, we got something just for you. <laughs> And they had four bottles of this Dos Artes tequila. Wow. You know? And um, uh, so, they, because they know it's my, it's my favorite, and Jack remembered that. And so when I got there, I mean, they kept, first and foremost, he gave me free, he gave me a taste of it. I can't say that he gave me free because uh, he charged me for it. Very, very little alcohol loss. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then Junior uh, Flores bought me some other shots, and that's sixteen dollars a shot. It's not wow. a cheap tequila. You know, the cost for the cost. It's a hundred dollar bottle of tequila. But um, anyway, uh, I thought that was that was awesome of them to just. Uh, I think by the end of the tournament, we went through a full bottle of it. And not that I drink a lot, because I'll take, I'll take a shot, and I bet it takes me an hour and a half to two hours to drink that one shot, because I use it for my voice. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, I just give it a little tiny sip. I liked that. I learned that from a, from a mariachi. 
he would sing and his voice would get kind of hoarse and he would take a little shot, just a little sip, enough to, to, to cover the, you know, the vocal cords. Uh, and every 20 minutes, every 10, 15 minutes, and that was it, you know, whatever, whatever it took. Hmm. Oh, this is tough. Because can he, can he stay out of the side pocket? It looks like he might be able to. I mean, he would have liked to have been on the rail. Oh, it's going to hit the corner. No telling where it's going to go. I think I'm playing safe. There's no reward if you make this three. I agree with you. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and hit the three ball into the rail, try to hit the eight with it, and follow the cue ball into the rail into those three balls. Yeah. Easy to, easy to say from here. Harder to do over there. Oh, what yeah, the hell? Well, look where he's at now. Yeah, that just didn't make any sense at all. Yeah, with that corner, you don't know where it's going to go when you hit that shot. He actually did a good job going forward. Yeah. Because he hit the corner. Hit the ball in the corner and it should have come back. But he had so much high angle shot that it went forward. Are you ready for your uh, referee eyes? I'm going to call Chuck over for that. <laughs> Here. Oh, you have someone on already. I do. <laughs> no, he's on his way. He just doesn't know they're going to call him. I don't think he's going to bother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They want you to watch him. I kicked it from the other side. I kicked to this rail over here and go back towards it. Oh yeah. What good did he think was going to happen if he made the three? He thought he could follow up and maybe hit those balls. He hit it pretty hard. Remember how hard he hit it? So I said he was lucky to. I, it was, he did good to come forward. He wasn't lucky. He tried to come forward. You've got to come into the five with such speed. Oh, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's, you were right with the, calling the safety to begin with. And even here, if he kicks this ball and makes good contact, where's he kicking it to and yeah. what's going to happen? Nothing. Cue ball's going to run goes, into the yeah. If he goes the other way, bad hit. Bad hit. Oh, he called it a good hit. Wow. Well, I think we saw it bad, but uh, everybody over there saw it good, so we didn't have the angle for it. All right. I don't know. Uh, Chuck says we've got a good winner's side match coming up here, so I'm not sure who it is. Oh, we're... Well, Mike, thanks for uh, allowing me to step in the booth with you. No, thanks for sitting I needed in the, booth. the practice. I appreciate it. Uh, have All a good right, everybody. Say hi to everybody tomorrow. Yep. You have a good time up there. We'll all really be listening. Been, I was really looking looking forward to, to playing.